what is going on guys welcome back to another video so today i am giving my first nhl mock draft for the 2024 nhl draft i've done my top 20 prospects multiple times at this point i did it before the season in september i did it about a month ago on this page but we are going to be putting ourselves in the shoes of the team selecting based on the current order as of right now so this can be really fun i've seen a ton of other creators and websites hockey outlets do a mock draft because we are post world juniors where some of the 2024 draft eligible guys did play basically we're at the halfway mark for every league across the entire world and the draft's only five ish months away i cannot wait to go for the draft it's gonna be so goddamn fun in vegas the last fully in-person draft but without further ado let's get into it here's the current order it goes washington then pittsburgh but this is actually san jose's pick barring pittsburgh jumping so this is gonna be san jose's pick at 15 detroit seattle Tampa, but that's actually Chicago's pick, unless it is top 10, but we're not going to assume that. St. Louis, Arizona, Calgary, Montreal, Buffalo, Wild, Columbus, Ottawa, Anaheim, Chicago, and San Jose. So we're going based off this, and then obviously Tampa is Chicago's pick, and Pittsburgh's is San Jose's. Up first, up first selecting is the Washington Capitals, and I have them taking Nikita Artemanov. Nikita Artemanov. I'm probably but butchering that name already, but as you can assume by the name, he is a Russian forward. He's playing in the, in the KHL right now. It's very impressive what he's done thus far in the KHL. He has 17 points in 38 games for the same team that another guy that's going to be on this list later, Anton Siliev, plays for. He plays for Torpedo, a 5'10", very speedy winger, very skilled, very well with positioning on the ice. He can play with others very well, especially at the pro level and just considering again 17 points in 38 games you don't see that at the KHL in the draft year you see them mainly playing the MHL and if they are playing in the KHL it's like goddamn five six minutes a night this is not common I don't think that he has the upside of a Demidov or a Michkov from this draft and last draft obviously but this guy should translate pretty well to the NHL and considering obviously the Capitals history with Russian players I, I could see this definitely being a fit. Up next, the San Jose Sharks from the Pittsburgh Penguins at 15th overall. I got them selecting Carter Yakumchuk. Carter Yakumchuk is playing for the Calgary Hitmen right now. He's a 6'3 defenseman that has 16 goals, 24 assists for 40 points in the WHL. He's just a solid, reliable, two-way guy. I think with the Sharks, he's definitely not their future like number one superstar. They're going to have to take... A, number, a guy in the top 10 probably in the next draft or two, but in this situation, they have the first overall pick. You can assume that they're probably going to take in the first overall pick, not to spoil the video, but uh, Yakum Chuck, again, just a reliable top, eventual top pair stud for the San Jose Sharks. I think he can be a solid mid 40 point guy, assuming they would have another offensive defenseman there. Just a very solid pick. Don't think that he has the upside of the other defenseman in this draft, but still a very high, high, floor guy not high ceiling high floor guy but still has a decent ceiling as well at 14th overall the Detroit Red Wings they end up selecting Trevor Conley I think with Detroit you kind of got to go forward because the defensive prospects are so elite obviously more Siders on the roster only 22 years old then they got Axel Sandin Pelica they got Simon Edvinson so, uh, so I, I think that like second round take a take a defenseman sure but in the first round you got to really dial in with your forwards considering Nate Danielson not the best draft year plus one Marco Casper starting to come alive in the AHL Lucas Raymond is their only surefire young stud so I think Trevor Conley is a pretty good shout right now he has 35 points in 25 games in the USHL doesn't play on the United States developmental program. He plays on the tri city storm. So he's really carrying his team in the USHL right now, 35 points in 25 games. He can be a solid two way winger, potential first liner on that Detroit team. He can play center left wing, right wing. It really doesn't matter. I like him at the next level being a solid 55 to 60 point guy. Again, not the highest upside similarly to a Yakum Chuck, but still a very solid prospect for Detroit and especially going forward at 13th overall. I'm not that high on this guy. A lot of other people are high on him. I have the Seattle Kraken selecting Adam Yerichek. You probably recognize that name. Yes, he is brothers with David Yerichek, the Columbus Blue Jackets, uh, 2022 sixth overall pick, who is an absolute stud. I loved him as a prospect. I think Seattle does end up going down the defenseman route. When you look at their young forward core, it's absolutely loaded, or it's going to be loaded in two to three years. Beniers, right, 
Ray Kampf, Furkus, Schale. They, they really got one of the better under 23 young, probably under 22, under 22 forward cores in the entire NHL. I think they go defense here. Your check's an interesting prospect because last year he did produce at a pretty high level over in Czechia. This year, he only has one point in 19 games and he got hurt at the World Juniors. I think he's missing serious time, but he definitely has the tools. It's just the production really hasn't followed. He's big like his brother. He's six foot two. I think he can end up being a solid top pair two way guy, but the lack of production just really scares me. If you're not producing at that high of a level at Czechia, over in Czechia at the pros, which he is playing in the men's league, but still it's Czechia. It's not the SHL. It's not even Liga. It has concerned me, but he definitely has the tools. Will he get the toolbox? We'll definitely see. But as of right now, I'm definitely a little bit lower on him than others. Next up, we got the Blackhawks. This is the Lightning's pick. I think they take a they, they swing for the fences with this pick, considering they have the second overall pick. I think they're probably going to go forward. I think they go with Anton Siliev. Anton Siliev is that 6'7 beast Russian defenseman. He had a fantastic start the first couple games. I think he had six points in his first nine games in the KHL. He has cooled down. He only has 11 points in 48 games. But similarly to uh, the guy that went 16th overall, Artemanov, they're on the same team, by the way. The fact he's doing this in the goddamn KHL, especially as a defenseman that takes longer to develop, and he's playing a pretty sizable role on this KHL team, is extremely impressive. And again, with Siliev, he or it's it's not like he's some clumsy six seven guy. He is a very solid skater, has solid hands, has an absolute clap bomb. So when looking at him at the next level, if you develop this guy correctly, I did my thing of. The guys in this draft that have the most potential, I think that he has either the second or third most potential in this entire draft. You look at the Zendane Chara comp, I, I, I'm i not going to like use that for him, but that definitely is the best case scenario for a guy like Siliev. And when compared to other Russian defenseman prospects, last year, Simashev went sixth overall. Simashev had zero points in 18 KHL games, so that just goes to show Simashev, although he was on a better team in the KHL, couldn't really cut it at the, at the KHL level. Meanwhile, Siliev is already producing at a decent level in the KHL. So I really like Siliev. And if and if and if you're Chicago, you already have Bedard. Korchinski looks like he's going to be an eventual stud. You have a top two pick based on this. They're going to definitely be locked into a top four pick regardless of this order if they finish second to last. So you're going to get that blue chip, blue chip prospect. So why not kind of take a swing for the fences with the 12th overall? Because you have so many firsts and prospects and assets down the line. Like you're, you're going to be fine even if you miss out on a 12th overall. So when looking at a guy like Siliev, I think that's a really interesting idea for the Chicago Blackhawks to swing on. Next up, the St. Louis Blues. I have them going off for a defenseman. I have them taking Zeev Boyum. Zeev Boyum obviously got the call up to the World Juniors team. I think he did look pretty solid. He ended up with five points in seven games. This guy's this guy's an offensive defenseman. He is the definition of an offensive defenseman. 25 points in 18 games for the University of Denver right now, which is on pace to be like, I think the best point per game ever by a player in their draft year in college. He, he's He's been absolutely insane. Yes, Denver doesn't play that tough of a schedule compared to the teams in the Big Ten or Hockey East. For those of you guys that don't know, those are like the two premier divisions. But still, what he's doing is fantastic. He does play on a loaded Denver team, but 25 points in 18 games is historic. And I think the Blues, with their current prospect pool, Snuggerud, Dvorsky, Stenberg, they do have Lindstein, who looked fantastic in the Swedish... Uh, in the World Juniors for Sweden, but I think Boyum would immediately become their number one defenseman and their defenseman of the future. They also have, obviously, Kairu Neighbors and Thomas. They don't have that elite defenseman prospect right now, so in this draft, that is a shit ton of defensemen. There is a shit ton of defensemen. I've already picked, what, three? There's more to come. So in looking at that, I think Boyum is going to be very high on the Blues board. I could see him going higher, but I have him going 11th to the St. Louis Blues. The Coyotes... Michael Bransegg, Nigard. Nigard had a very good World Juniors as well. He ended up having three goals, two assists for five points. And even before that, he tore up Swedish Juniors. He had 12 points in seven games until they threw him up in the second tier league in Sweden. And he's been pretty solid there, not producing at that high of a level. But again, second tier Swedish league is pretty legit. And when you look at this guy, he is just that typical right wing that at the NHL level can really basically do everything. 
two-way guy, does like to get a little bit physical. So I think Nygaard at the next level is going to translate, can definitely keep up with a Logan Cooley if he's playing on Logan Cooley's wing. And when looking at the Arizona Coyotes, if we know anything, they're not afraid to take a risk with guys. Simashev, Boot last year, we kind of laughed at them. They're developing pretty well. Were they worth the 6th and 12th overall picks? We'll see. But but thus far, they've been very good. And when you look at Brandseg Nygaard, he it comes from Norway, which is an untraditional hockey mark, hockey country that might scare some teams. But Bill Armstrong doesn't give a shit. If he believes in his talent, he's going to select them. Next up, I got the Calgary Flames selecting Zane Parrick. I'm sure they would absolutely love this. Zane Parrick has been tearing up the OHL. He has 18 goals, 37 assists for 55 points in just 37 games. This guy has the highest offensive ceiling in the entire draft, I would say, arguably, even ahead of a guy like Zeev Boyan with what he's done in college hockey. He plays a similar style to a Kale McCarr. You've heard the comparisons between Kale McCarr. I I would, I would never say that he's going to be the next Kevin Carr or something, because if I did think that, he'd be going, like, goddamn second overall. But Perrick, it look, looks like an eventual elite top pair power play quarterback that can get you 60-plus points. We're, we're, he's definitely going to have to work on his defense at the next level. That could potentially hold him back. But offensively, at least, this guy is oozing with offensive potential. And I think if you're the Calgary Flames and you have some very good young forwards, young forward prospects, Zari, Coronado, uh... Hanzik that you drafted most recently. I think Perrick fits very well with that core as they continue to go through this rebuild or retool. At eighth overall, I have the Montreal Canadiens selecting Berkeley Cadden. Berkeley Cadden, fantastic WHL season this year. He has 61 points in 37 games after having 55 and 63 last year. I think after going Reinbacher last year in the draft, especially on top of having Hudson and Gooley already, I don't think the Canadians go defenseman. I think they go forward. And Berkeley Cadden, I don't think that he has the highest potential in the world, but I think he definitely has a very high floor based on his WHL numbers. Just watching him play, just such a skilled forward. I can't really see this kid busting. I can see this kid at the bare minimum being a 45, 50 point decent second liner just because of the offensive tools that this guy possesses. I don't think that he's going to be a better forward than a Cole Caulfield or a Nick Suzuki, but I think he's very much going to slot in somewhere on that second line. He can play all over the lineup, but I think he's going to slot in somewhere on that second line and just really help the Canadians with their overall offensive core. Next up, seventh overall. This was by far the hardest one for me to do. This is the Buffalo Sabres. You think about the Sabres, obviously power Darlene defense, forward core already looking loaded. They got guys like Ostland, uh, Coolidge, Paterka, Quinn, Savoy, Benson that are like under the age of 22. So I actually ended up going with defense and I went with Sam Dickinson, six foot three, 13 goals, 26 assists for 39 points in 39 games. Again, I, I think he's going to be NHL ready rather quick, not a project like an Anton Siliev. And I think he has a very high floor with the Buffalo Sabres. If you're getting a guy like Sam Dickinson, you don't need him to be a future franchise number one defenseman. You got that. If he can just be a reliable 40 point two way guy, you're perfectly fine taking that at seventh overall to bolster your defense core, having that three headed monster of Darlene Dickinson and uh, power would probably be the best under 25 defense core in the entire league. So I think they end up going with defense. At sixth overall, the Minnesota Wild, Consta Hellenius. I think this is their Miko Koivu, Koivu 2.0. I, I thought about maybe going defense here for the Wild. They do have Brock Faber, but Spurgeon and Brodeen are starting to get up there in age. But at the end of the day, I did go with a guy like Hellenius. I think he fits what the Minnesota Wilds identity has been for the last couple of years. Smart two-way hockey. I think he has the second highest floor in the entire draft, in my opinion, after what he's done in Liga this year. I, I can't really see him busting. He has 20 points in 29 games, as well as being very good last year. Didn't have the best world juniors, only one goal and one assist for two points in seven games. But actually watching the game, I hate to be like, oh, watch the damn game. But actually watching it, he got better every single game. He, he looked pretty bad the first two games, but I watched basically every single one of Finland's games and he gained confidence, was making far more plays throughout. I think the stat line, the box score watchers don't really get the full picture with him at world juniors. And even regardless, seven games, I'm more concerned about how he's put up 
near Barkov and Line A numbers. Near, not not the same level, but he's put up fantastic numbers in Liga this year. That 20, 29 game sample size means more than a seven game tournament, in my opinion. I'm still very high on him. I think he will fall a little bit compared to where I'd maybe have him, but sixth overall to the Minnesota Wild, eventually replacing that Joel Eriksson next, what, eight years older? No, it's nine years older. Joel Eriksson was 2015, but he'll one day replace Joel Eriksson as their responsible two way center. Maybe Marco Rossi will be their legit offensive number one center, but still at fifth overall, the Columbus Blue Jackets. Columbus Blue Jackets already got Matej Chuck, already got Yurchek. Down the middle, they got Ken Johnson, they got Adam Fantilli. So I got them going with Caden Lindstrom. Caden Lindstrom, the 6'5 guy that plays in the WHL for the Medicine Hat Tigers. 29 goals. 19 assists for 46 points in just 32 games this season. And he's 6'5". Scouts are starting to salivate over this guy. And I, I, I don't blame them, dude. I don't blame them. He skates very well. has fantastic hands. He reminds me kind of of Quinn and Byfield with that build. So when looking at him, I think him and Adam Fantilli, you throw him on Adam Fantilli's wing, that could be one of the best duos in the entire league in five to six years. I think Katie Limstrom has... Second or third highest potential in this entire, no, actually third or fourth highest potential in this in this entire draft. And if you're the Blue Jackets, I think most of your young core is in place. I think if you kept this young core and built around them, you would eventually be a playoff team. So why not kind of take a swing on a guy like a Caden Lynch, who I still think, not saying he has a horrendous floor, but he has such a high ceiling. I think you really just go for that after getting Adam Fantilli in the draft last year. At number four, this just makes far too much sense in my opinion. The Ottawa Senators select Artem Leshinov. You look at them, they already got their young forwards in place. They got Kachuk, Greg, why did I name Greg before? Stutzla, Pinto, Norris is still pretty young, Batherston's still pretty young. <clears throat> so when looking at it, Leshinov, young defenseman, absolute highest floor out of a defenseman in this draft while also having an extremely elite ceiling six foot two the ideal defenseman build in my opinion fantastic skate just as everything at a high level I think guys like Perrick maybe offer more on the offensive side and maybe a guy like Siliev can be more shut down defensively but I think when looking at Leshinov he just does everything at a very high level and with the Ottawa Senators considering I believe he's a right-handed defenseman so Jake Sanderson's on the left side and when looking at it I think they are gonna have to choose between especially if they get this pick between Chikrin or Chabot I think Leshinov could be the eventual franchise defenseman for the Ottawa Senators, and this is a team that is lacking defensemen very much across the board. So I think considering Leshinov, in my opinion, is pretty easily the number one defenseman in this draft, and I think the, the scouts also reflect that for the most part. I think Artem Leshinov to the Ottawa Senators just makes a lot of sense, in my opinion. At number three, so we're down to three names. You know it by now. Demidov, Iserman, and Celebrini. Number three is Demidov. Demidov going to the Anaheim Ducks. They already have their center stable of the future. I think with that Drysdale deal, that maybe told us that they're good on defense as of right now. And I, I, I personally wouldn't take Leshinov over Demidov. So when looking at Demidov, get that speedy, skilled Russian winger to pair with one of your centermen. Probably like, I think, I think he'd fit I think he'd fit more so with the McTavish than a Leo Carlson, in my opinion. So when looking at this, Demidov... Definitely not Matt Faye Mitchkov of level, but you look at him last year. He had the second highest points per game in the MHL, Russian juniors, in league history outside of Matt Faye Mitchkov in his 16, 17-year-old season. He had 62 points in 41 games, so that was historic. He dealt with a serious shoulder injury before this season, which kept him out of a couple games, but he's back to producing at a high level, 28 points in 18 games. Again, just, just probably the smoothest player in this entire draft. You watch clips of him and you watch games of him. His hands are so disgusting. Like, like, like smoother than Celebrini by far. He makes the game. He simplifies the game so much watching him play. He's so far because he's still playing in juniors. He's processing the game at such a high level compared to the rest of his opponents, Re opponents, opponents. So in looking at him, he really just makes a mockery of the guys. And I see a little bit of Kucherov. I like, I'm not saying he's going to be the next Kucherov. And I know that is kind of a basic comp, but I definitely see a little bit of Kucherov, the deception, the smooth hands. I really like the meet off and I think he'd fit very well on the Anaheim Ducks at number two. Cole Eiserman heading to the Blackhawks. Bedard and Cole Eiserman. That is two potential 50 goal scorers playing on the same line. I, I, I don't love the fit with Bedard and Eiserman, but I think that Bedard is good enough of a playmaker, even though they are both 
kind of snipers, more so goal scorers. I think Bedard is good enough of a playmaker to be able to feed Eisman and them work well together. I don't think it's a case of that they just need to be ripping the puck nonstop. Eisman kind of needs that playmaking center to play with, so I think Bedard can fit that role. And you look at him, He's been like the greatest goal scorer in U.S. developmental program history. He's probably going to break Cole Caulfield's record this year. He has the U16 or the U17 record. He has just been such a fantastic goal scorer. He has that A-plus shot. The rest of his game, long way to come. But when looking at the Chicago Blackhawks and you already have your franchise piece, your franchise center, I think you take a shot on a Cole Eisman that has that one extremely elite trait and you hope that Connor Bedard can help grow with him and help develop him. And also the thing with Cole Eisman that really helps his case is he's a late August birthday. I believe his birthday is August 26th. So he's like three weeks away from being a 2025 draftee. That shit does matter with this. You look at a Luke Hughes who was a late August birthday, or he's maybe even a September birthday. That that I do consider that if guys are eight, nine months older, like Demidov has a December birthday. So Demidov is eight months older than a Cole Eisenman. I think that does matter in players' developments. That definitely is another thing going forward with Cole Eisenman. And then at number one, not much of a surprise. It is obviously Celebrini going to the San Jose Sharks. I think he shut down any discussion because of how look good he looked at World Juniors on the international stage. I already knew it because I watched him. I watched him in college and the stats he put up in college. But at World Juniors this year, four goals, four assists for eight points in five games. Granted, five of those points were against Latvia, but he was by far the most dangerous and the most skilled forward on that team, Canada. He even exceeded, to a degree, my ex- expectations. He was very, very elite. And then at Boston University, he was also on pace for a historic season as of right now. He has 27 points in 16 games, puts him on 1.69 point per game pace. Adam Fantilli did put up 1.8 point per game pace last year. But again, going back to the birthdays, Adam Fantilli, an October birthday, Macklin Celebrini, a mid June birthday. Celebrini is eight months younger and he's putting up around the same pace with that development. And you just look at Celebrini. I, I don't think that he has Eisenman's level shot. Obviously Eisenman has that a plus trait. Bedard had an a plus trait in his shot. Matthews, a plus shot. Uh, McDavid, A-plus skating. Jack Hughes, arguably around A-plus skating. I don't think Celebrini has any trait that is A-plus. But I think he does everything at like an A-minus to A-level, and it makes him a fantastic near-bus-proof uh, prospect, in my opinion. Again, not generational, but the overall package that Macklin Celebrini brings is without a doubt the best in this draft, and the San Jose Sharks will be getting a franchise forward, a franchise top 10, maybe even top 5 center one day if they end up with Mack and Celebrini. So let's run through it again. Capitals, 16th overall, Artemanov, Yakumchuk, Conley to the Red Wings, Yurichek to the Kraken, Siliev to the Blackhawks, Boyum to the Blues, Nigard to the Yotes, Parrick to the Flames, Cadden to the Canadians, Dickinson to the Sabres, Helenius to the Wild, Lindstrom to the Blue Jackets, Leshinov to the Senators, Demidov to the Ducks, Iserman to the Blackhawks, and Celebrini to the Sharks. Let me know in the comments. What do you think about this? I'm going to be doing this again in a month or two or so. But yeah, it's going to be an interesting draft. There, there's, there's uh, past Celebrini. There's no guarantees. This could look completely different in a month or two, but I want to hear from you guys and I'll be seeing you in the next one.